AMD actually got their start by making Intel CPUs. That's right, AMD's first ever CPU dating back to 1975 was the AM9080, a clone of the Intel 8080 that Team Red built after a little bit of corporate espionage. AMD actually only spent about 50 cents to make each chip, but sold them to the defense industry for about 1,400 times that cost. Talk about profit margin. But funnily enough, Intel and AMD resolved the small matter of you know, AMD copying Intel's work by signing an agreement that allowed AMD to produce Intel designed chips as a second source for Team Blue. Because of this agreement, many of AMD's early CPUs were clones of Intel's various designs, though there were a couple of notable non x86 CPUs as well, such as 1975's AM2900, which was used in the Xerox Star, an early PC that was notable for being surprisingly modern in terms of features. It had a good with Windows, that's with a little w, Ethernet support, and even a mouse. But after this, Team Red made clones of the Intel 8086 in 1982 and 186 in 1984, though their 186 clone was mostly aimed at embedded devices. AMD's next big release for PCs was the AM286, which also came out in 1984, and although it was initially identical to Intel's 286, AMD offered variants with higher clock speeds than Intel a few years later. 1987 brought AMD's last big non-x86 release the AM29000, which, randomly enough, found most of its use in laser printers. So it probably isn't surprising that AMD decided to concentrate on the PC market and brought us the AM386 in 1991. AMD's 386 was actually a result of some reverse engineering that AMD's scientists did, as Intel actually refused to share their microcode with Team Red by that point. The AM386 became quite popular as it was faster and more power efficient than Intel's own version, and even introduced sleep mode to laptop PCs, which was a big deal at the time. 1993's AM486 was also very successful, even though it was released well after Intel's version. AMD sold it for a cheaper price, which was very appealing when you consider that it even beat some of the first Pentium CPUs in terms of performance. An updated 486 called the AM5X86 was released in 1995 before we were introduced to the K5 that same year. The release of the K5 was a huge moment for AMD because it was the first ever x86 CPU that they designed completely by themselves. The letter K was supposed to stand for kryptonite, like to Intel's Superman. But unfortunately for AMD, the chip was a bit of a dud as it failed to live up to the hype. More like Lex Loser, got him. AMD had much better fortune though with the K6 released in 1997. Like the AM486, it was supposed to provide equivalent performance at a cheaper cost and mostly delivered that as it went up against the Pentium 2. It featured a completely different architecture than the K5, though it did retain the advantage that it could just be dropped into older Intel-based machines. After a few revisions of the K6, AMD rolled out the K7 architecture in 1999. But instead of calling it K7, they gave it a brand name that you've probably become familiar with, Athlon. Athlon was extremely successful both in performance and business terms, because not only did it outperform Intel's chips for several years, it helped AMD gain even more market share and mind share against Intel, especially in PCs under $1,000, which was a rapidly growing segment at the time. Athlon was actually so fast that some chips had to operate at lower clock speeds than they were capable of because memory at the time couldn't keep up with it. There were also some interesting revisions of the Athlon. The Thunderbird from 2000, which was a famously great overclocker. Athlon MP from 2001, which was a multi-CPU platform for consumers. Athlon 64 from 2003, which was the first 64-bit desktop CPU. And the Athlon 64 X2 from 2004, which introduced dual core computing to the masses. Contemporaneously, we also got Duron in 2000, a K7-based budget CPU. Athlon XP in 2001, which was mostly just a slick attempt to imply better compatibility with Windows XP. Opteron in 2003, a server CPU lineup that used a similar architecture to the Athlon 64. Sempron in 2004, another low-end series that came after Duron. And then Turion in 2005, a laptop CPU that was focused on power savings. 
The similar names came from the fact that they all shared architectures with Athlon chips, which were doing quite well for themselves until about 2006, when Intel started to take the lead in multi-core processing. AMD tried to counter with the K10 architecture marketed as Phenom starting in 2007. Phenom was AMD's first foray into quad-core computing, yet it was also the start of a long decline for Team Red. AMD's philosophy became to focus on getting lots of cores onto their chips and selling them at low prices, as we saw with their six-core Phenom variant in 2010. This chip, called the Phenom 2X6, used the same K10 architecture, while Intel was actively improving their own designs. That means that Team Blue held the crown for single-threaded performance, which still ruled the day in PC land. AMD tried to improve their situation by releasing the first Fusion APUs, which is their term for a CPU with strong integrated graphics, in 2011, followed by their FX processor series that same year, based on the new Bulldozer architecture. Although the Bulldozer series seemed impressive because it offered so many cores, the cores shared crucial die elements, which made them significantly worse in single-threaded performance than Intel's chips. Outside of a few mobile CPUs named after Big Cats released in 2011, AMD spent the next few years just releasing rehashes of the same flawed architecture under various names, including FX and A-Series, resulting in their desktop market share falling to around 20% by 2016. That's a far cry from 10 years prior when they were in a virtual dead heat with Intel. But AMD finally brought to life their plan to re-emphasize solid single-core computing performance in 2017 when we got the Zen architecture. It was marketed as Ryzen for the mid and high-end segments and kept the good old Athlon name for budget-minded shoppers. Zen was a total redesign that abandoned the shared resource philosophy of Bulldozer and performed at a level that was strong enough to be a serious threat to Intel. Zen sold so well, in fact, that AMD finally pulled even again with Intel in desktop market share toward the end of 2020, and AMD's release of its Threadripper enthusiast line and Epic server lines in 2017, both based on Zen, showed that Team Red was serious about competing with Intel, not just at the budget end, but at the top end, with some variants featuring up to 64 high-performance cores on just one chip. And that's the story of AMD's CPUs to the present day. I just hope that they don't announce Zen 4 before we post this video, making our video out of date. But then I mentioned it, so we're good. And this is a good segue to our sponsor, Redux. Thank you, Redux, for sponsoring this video. Redux offers hardware for your gaming PC with no markup pricing, meaning you just pay what you would pay to buy it from a normal store, and then just $75, and they will build it for you. Redux gives you a two-year warranty for parts and labor alongside the PC. That's included with the $75. And you can use their online PC builder to customize what's going inside your PC based on the games you want to play and how much you want to spend. Why is it so simple? Well, because Redux believes in bringing PC gaming to the masses. That's it. So it's just a small build fee and they won't cut corners on quality. So why wait? Check them out at the link in the video description and create your dream PC today. Thanks for watching. You can like or dislike this video depending how you feel. Check out our other videos and don't forget to subscribe.